in our first report that we're going to look at here will be insights. Uh, so this is under the analysis section here. We can see that MakeSpinal has organized things into logical categories. Um, so we'll look at all the analysis reports first, and we'll start with insights. So this is what insights look like. Now, insights actually replaced another report called segmentation, which was part of MakeSpinal for really ever since they started, and it was actually the most popular report. Uh, so this is the sort of 2.0 version of segmentation. And really, what we, what we get to do here is we get to slice through our, our data. We get to slice through our events. So as we covered before, we have events, we have event properties, we have people properties or user attributes. And in here, we can start to slice it through and, and try to find trends or insights. Um, so for example, the, the default report here will take all our top events. So you know this account will have quite a bit of events. But actually, we'll just look at the top ones, the ones that have been fired the most in the last 96 hours. And then we get this, uh, I believe it's like top 12 uh, events here. So we get the, you know, the event name here on the left-hand side and the counts. You know, we're looking at total counts here, total counts. So we get the counts here and the breakdown for each event, right? And how much it contributed to the overall amount. Uh, we can, of course, change this from a bar to a line, right? If we want to see that, uh, we can make a pie chart. Same thing, and we can make a table if that is easier to read. So we have a few options here on how we on how we handle this. Now, typically, what, what we'll do here is we'll start to really actually take some kind of event and start to slice through it, so it's a segment it through it, which is really where a lot of the magic of Mixed comes in. So let's say we take the very first event here, this uh, puzzle completed. So we'll go find it, puzzle. Let's actually look for puzzle completed. So now we get just that, right? Just that one event. But now we can add, uh, and we're basically building queries here. Um, this is very similar to what you might find in something like SQL, uh, SQL analysis, but they of course have made the interface much more approachable for non-technical people who may not be familiar with it. But you're effectively building SQL queries uh, just with kind of point and click. So now we can take this event and we can break it down. Uh, we can break it down by maybe specific user properties or event properties, or maybe compare it to another event. We'll do a breakdown. And we'll take, uh, let's say, city. Let's see what data we have here. Okay. So we take that, that possible complete event, and then we break it down by city, and we get the different cities here broken down. And of course, there's a limit. You know, there's quite a bit of city values, but we only get the, the top, uh, maybe the top 20, 20, 25, right? And we can continue doing this. We could break it down further again. Uh, we might want to break it down by, I don't know. Let's see what's here. Uh, maybe operating system, Let's see if that makes a difference. So we get you know the cities on one hand, and then we get iPhone or Android on the other hand, and we can continue doing this. And you know we're we're now we're we're basically slicing through our data by a different criteria, right? And here we might be looking to answer questions such as what's going on with the product, are people using a specific feature, uh, is maybe usage coming from a specific system versus another one, and so on, right? Uh, we can of course compare to other events, so we can add another event. We can maybe find the the loaded, the puzzle loaded event. So we take puzzle completed and puzzle loaded, and we sec we slice it by city and operating system. So we have a puzzle loaded here, and then down here we have a puzzle completed, also broken down, right? So this is kind of interesting because really what what you're doing here, you're doing a lot of data exploration, right? Um, and typically in the past, or maybe in your company, if you don't have a tool like Mixpanel, you might say, I have these kind of questions, and someone out there will build a report for you. But in this case, you can actually build on your own, right? You can play around with things, remove them, you can see everything loads relatively quickly. And you know, over a few minutes, you can start to try to explore the data. Uh, time, typical time ranges you might expect here, right? Current day, last day, last 12 months. Um, we have a lot of options here. We can also filter data, right? We might want to say uh, filter by a property, whether it's an event property or people property. And we might say, you know, we only want um, country, uh, let's say Canada, just because I'm, I'm from Canada. All right. And all of a sudden now, all our data here from before will only include cities, or really will only include country um, events that match the country event property of, of Canada. And of course, we see our Canadian cities here uh, that we're familiar with, Edmonton, and I'm sure Vancouver, my city is somewhere in here, or maybe no one plays this. Uh, this is actually a mobile game. Maybe no one plays this game here, right? So we can add filters. Uh, we can add multiple filters, right? 
you see options like cohorts here, right? The idea of a, of a cohort. That's something that, that we'll explore later on when we actually look at cohorts, you can, but you, you can bring them in here. There's this handy thing here where we can compare it to the past. Uh, typically pretty cool, right? If we wanna say, uh, I don't know, previous week, right? So now we get the same idea, and now we're, now we're comparing the values of, in this case, let's say, uh, we don't have a last seven days option, but I say last 96 hours versus previous week, right? And uh, we can add formulas. Uh, so formulas are just a way to, to create maybe more advanced things, um, uh, something that I won't cover as much, uh, but it, it gives you an option to say if you wanna sum or decrease um, or combine different things in special ways, uh, that's a way to do it. Uh, something that I've seen other products have, especially uh, products like Amplitude, they have a lot of support for this. Uh, so it's something that makes fun those bringing in here. The final point I'll make, I'll make here is we do have options here, right? Instead of just looking at total events, we can look at unique events, which will typically correspond to actual users. So if you want to look at not how many total times a puzzle was completed, but how many users completed a puzzle, you would kind of go towards unique. And things like averages and medians, min and max, some of the uh, things you might be familiar with um, if you work with data or really in anything, right? Once you have a report built, uh, you can actually uh, save it. Well, you can actually, you know, there's a few things you can do. You can, you know, download the data as a CSV. Uh, you can save the report, right? Um, you can save it, and then you can come back and relook uh, re at it. So if you if you spend 20 minutes building a query, uh, you can just save it and come back to it. And then sometimes you'll be able to also add it to dashboards, which you also look at. In this case, this specific one is actually not supported in a dashboard, uh, but uh, it might be just a level of complexity. So you have a few different things. You build it, you're ready. Uh, in the company, someone can build those reports and they can just be um, refreshed whenever you open them. And that's really it. Insights will, will likely be one of the most popular reports that you use because of how much flexibility you have when it comes to how you can analyze your data. So this is really the, the, the first fundamental report that you need to understand and master uh, when it comes to Mixed Metal.